In previous episodes, I have shown how the wireless signals at millimeter wave frequencies are transmitted very directionally and doesn't propagate well through various kinds of materials. And that means that millimeter wave systems are mainly for line of sight usage. However, there is a new kind of hardware known as Reconfigurable Intelligent Surfaces, or RIS, that can be used as an intelligent mirrors to reflect millimeter wave signals around corners. In this video, I will show you theoretically and experimentally how RIS can be used to extend the coverage of a millimeter wave system. Our goal is to control how a wireless signal is reflected between a transmitter and the receiver. So therefore we will take a first look at how normal reflection of signals are happening. So this is a transmitter that sends out a wireless signal. And it will propagate in all directions. In particular it will go towards the left here. And let's consider that there is a big reflecting flat object over here. To understand where the wireless signal is going after the reflection, we can first draw the so-called normal, which is a perpendicular line to the reflecting surface, and measure the incoming angle here, which is called theta. The outgoing angle is the same, but on the other side of this normal. So we can say that it's plus theta and minus theta. And therefore the reflected signal is going straight down in this picture. This is known as Snell's law, which is saying that the incident angle and the outgoing angle are the same, but on the other side of the normal. Suppose now that there is a user device that would like to receive the signal, but there is a blocking object that makes it impossible for the signal to go directly from the transmitter to the receiver. Therefore, it is having a bad coverage. We can also see that the reflected signal is going straight down, so it is not reaching the device either. And this is all determined by how the reflected surface looks like. So if you would rotate the reflected surface a little bit, then the normal direction will be different. The incident angle, called theta2 now, will be different. And therefore the reflection angle minus theta2 would also be different. So now the reflected signal is going straight down towards the user device, which can now experience a good coverage instead. So we notice that there is a particular rotation of the surface that is preferable to provide coverage to this used device. But the actual surface will most likely not be rotated like that. And it's not really practical to physically rotate surfaces for reflection purposes in a practical system. But if this actual surface is a reconfigurable intelligent surface, it can actually be configured in such a way that it mimics the rotated surface. In particular, it might be delaying the signals in the upper part much more than in the lower part in order to let the wireless signal experience a situation that is similar to the rotated surface. And this is what a RIS can do. So it consists of many small elements that can delay signals to different extents. So we will have multiple paths now from the transmitter to the receiver via this RIS. So we have the green path through one element and the red path through another element. And if we measure the total length of the red and the green part, it will be different distances, D1 and D2. And there will be a path length difference called delta, which is different between D1 and D2. And that will have an impact on how the wireless signal looks like when it's reaching the user device. A wireless signal at a particular carrier frequency, say 28 gigahertz, has a wavelength that we can calculate, and in this case it is 11 millimeters, which is why we are calling it millimeter wave communications when operating at these frequencies. And the wavelength is actually the physical distance between two peaks of the wireless signals when it propagates over there. When the wave have to propagate at different distances, in particular having a path difference of delta, well then the signal that is reaching the user device will be shifted back and forth like this. So we will have this delta difference. And the goal of the RIS is to compensate for this. So between two elements here, when we have this path difference of delta, we would like to shift one of the signals through an extra delay, so that the upper curve here is in line with the lower curve after the compensation, namely when the signal is reaching the receiver. Since the wireless signal is repeating itself after one wavelength, we never have to delay it more than one wavelength. Therefore, we often are talking about phase shift measured in degrees between zero 
and 360 degrees, with 180 degrees being in the middle here. And the way of calculating this is to take your delta, divide with one wavelength, and multiply it with 360 degrees. And if we now end up with a number that is bigger than 360 degrees, well then we can just subtract 360 multiple times until we get something between 0 and 360. This millimeter wave RAS consists of 1024 elements that we can configure individually. They are arranged 32 by 32. And for each element we can select a face that is either 0 or 180 degrees when we reflect the signal. And by controlling them and selecting the right pattern, we can make the reflected signals go in the direction that we want it to go. Let us now consider an example when a wireless signal is reaching the RAS and it comes in from an angle of minus 5 degrees in the horizontal plane. If all RAS element has the same phase shift, then the signal will leave at a plus 5 degree angle. But we want the signal to be reflected towards plus 15 degrees. And therefore, I'm now showing you the phase shift that we are assigning to all our different elements. It's a number between 0 and 360 degrees indicated by colors. We are considering signals coming in the horizontal plane at minus 5 degrees and we want it to leave at plus 15 degrees. Therefore, horizontally, we need to provide different phase shifts. While vertically, we are not changing anything. We can see how the phase shift is growing from 0 up to 360 degrees. And then it starts over again because we never need to make a phase shift bigger than 360 because the wave is repeating itself. So then we have another period of 360 degrees and then half a period more over our 32 element horizontally. However, the RS that we are using cannot use just any values between 0 and 360 degrees. It can only have two different phase shift values of 0 and 180 degrees. Therefore, we need to take all these values here and just quantize it into different segments things that are close to 0, things that are close to 180, close to 0, and so on. What I have described so far is valid when the transmitter that sends out the wireless signal is far from the RAS. But that is not always the case in millimeter wave communications. So what happens really is that the transmitter sends out something that spreads out like a sphere, and then when we are observing it far away, it would look like it's locally almost like a planar wavefront that propagates in only one direction. And when we see this, we are in the so-called far field. And this is what we are used to in wireless communications. But it's not the case in our setup. Very close to the array, we have something called the reactive near field that is utilized with RFID tags. But in our scenario, we have something called a radiative near field where we can still see some of the curvature when the signal is reaching the RAS. And we are in the radiative near field at distances smaller than the Fraunhofer distance, which is computed in this formula that depends on the area of the RAS and the wavelength. So in our case, the Fraunhofer distance is 10 meters. So if we are doing an indoor experiment with the RAS, we will be in the radiative near field. So with the far field transmitter, the RAS can configure itself like this in order to reflect the signal from minus 5 degrees to plus 15 degrees in the horizontal plane. But when the transmitter is at a short distance, we need something looking more like this, where you can see the spherical curvature. This is our demo setup. We have a millimeter wave transmitter over here, sending a signal towards an RAS, which is reflecting it to a receiver over here and it is 1.2 meters between the transmitter and the RS, 1.4 between the RS and the receiver, and we have made sure that the receiver is behind the transmitter so that the amount of signal that is leaked in between them is going to be negligible. And then we have a five degree angle from the transmitter to the RS, and if this was a normal mirror, it would reflect the signal in a five degree angle on the other side. However, our receiver is at the 15 degree angle and the reflections here have a beam width of 5 degrees. So with a normal reflection, you will miss the receiver and get the signal over here instead. The experiments were done in the KTH faculty lounge in Stockholm, which is a room that is roughly 11 by 7 meters. And on purpose, we placed a transmitter, RAS and receiver in the middle of the room to avoid strong wall reflections. Here is a picture of the setup where you can see the transmitter and the receiver at their respective angles. And they are also connected to computers for control. 
And that turns out to be quite important in this scenario. So we have the transmitter over here. It sends a signal of a minus five degree. And what we did was to change the RES configuration to reflect signals everywhere from zero to plus 30 degrees. If we reflect the signal according to Snell's law in plus five degrees, we will miss both the receiver and the laptop on its table. If we reflect it at a higher angle of eight degrees, it will start hitting the laptop here for an interval of angles, and then some of it will be reflected back towards the receiver. At plus 15 degrees, we hit the receiver directly. So this is the received signal power that we were measuring for different beam directions of our reflection. We first see how a small side lobe is hitting the receiver, but when we are changing the reflection angle up to five, six degrees, we are hitting the noise floor over here. Then the signal power that we are receiving is increasing again because we see a reflection on the laptop. And after a while it goes down and we instead start to be having a main lobe pointing towards the receiver and we have the peak angle exactly at 15 degrees, which is where we put our receiver. When we continue increasing the reflection angle, we see how the received power is going down and we roughly have a five degree beam width here with the reasonably strong beam forming gain. After that, the signal is going down and we come almost all the way down to the noise floor. So what we noticed is that a reflection according to Snell's law at plus five degree will miss the receiver entirely. If we are reflecting exactly towards it, we can create a virtual line of sight path where the signal is going through the RS to the receiver as if it was in line of sight, but it's actually where a bended path through the RS. And this peak was due to the reflection on the laptop controlling the receiver. We can do a basic verification that the signal actually comes from the RS. So if I am covering it like this with my body, you can see that the receive power drops down to nothing. A normal mirror can also be used to reflect wireless signals from the transmitter to the receiver. But if you place it like this, then you will have to rotate it in the right way in order to make sure that the signal is actually going into the receiver and not somewhere else. So it's kind of hard to rotate it mechanically like this depending on where the receiver is located. While a RAS is able to change its configuration without moving mechanically so that it steers the direction of the reflected signal depending on where you place your receiver. In summary, a reconfigurable intelligent surface can be used to reflect wireless signals in preferred directions. And this feature is particularly useful in the millimeter wave communications where the signals are transmitted very directionally and other kinds of materials are not very good at reflecting signal towards a receiver. If we use this RES technology in indoor scenarios, we need to take near field propagation effects into account because an entire room can be in the radiative near field of the RES.